This video is a good tutorial of using Sagebox at a basic coding level. It shows how to add Sagebox to an already existing program and how to use simple events and simple Windows graphics functions. This is part one, and in part two, I show even more power of Sagebox. So let's just start with a plain console mode application from scratch. And I'll call it Sagebox Intro. And then you can see it's just putting it in the regular standard default directories. And this is a project that is just a plain console mode project with nothing to do with Sagebox. So when we get the template, we see just the basic preamble in the Hello World. And when we run it, we get pretty much what we expect. We get a console app with Hello World. So let's clean this up a little bit by getting rid of the template comments. And then I'm going to add Sagebox, but not through a project template, but in a way where we can include it in any program, this new program here or an existing program. And I'm going to include Sagebox.h, which in my case is in the directory Sagebox get includes Sagebox. Now I'm going to create a window with a function called new window. And to keep it from closing down when the program closes down, I'm going to also call a function called exit button, which will create a button at the bottom of the window for us to press to close the program. And when I compile it, you can see we get an error because it doesn't know where the Sagebox libraries are. So we could add this to the project configuration. We could give it the input library, and then we could also give it a path where the library is. So I could enter, for example, Sagebox slash lib, you know, where I have it. But what I want to do is I want to show how we can do this very easily without a project configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a pragma. The pragma allows me to specify the library location here in the source code. And so here I can put where the library is in my case. And then I can use a x32 or x64. In this case, it's an x32 program. So I'll do that. And that's the nice thing about the configurations. We can make it more automatic. So now when I compile it, it compiles just fine. And now I can run it and have my basic window. So now let's put hello world out to the window, just like we did to the console window. Now we have Hello World in both places. And with our graphics window, our Windows window, we can make that font bigger and we can do a lot of other things. So here we have Hello World in a bigger font. And so now let's say we want to do something like put a circle on the window. First, let's get rid of the semicolon. And then let's start with a radius of, say, 100. And then let's get our window size so we can put the circle in the center of the window. So we want to get the width and the height with the CX and CY and divide these by two so we can get the center from the window size. An easier way to do this is to cast it to an object-oriented C point, much like MSVC C point, where we can divide it by two and get the same value. So let's change the name of window size. It's not exactly a size. Let's change it to window center. It's more of a location. And now we can draw our circle. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get a color for the circle. So we can use an RGB color and call it circle color, and we can assign it to red. As you can see, this is just a regular RGB 25500 color. We can put that in there instead. We can just use the direct colors, or we can use the Pantone colors, like pan color red. And so let's just go ahead and keep that there so we can draw our circle. So now we can call draw circle color and give it the location, our radius, and our color, and compile it. And when we run it, we see a circle in the middle of our window. Let's put a border around the circle. So let's set a pen size of a default of, say, 5. And so we can call set pen size with this value, which will put a border around the circle. And so if we specify the pen size, let's put white here, we can do it with an RGB value, or we can go ahead and use a symbolic value. So now when we compile and run it, we have a nice white border around our circle. So now let's say that what we want to do is every time we click the mouse, we want to draw a circle. So to do that, we need to get the mouse click. So we need to get the mouse events. And then every time we click the mouse, we want to draw the circle wherever the mouse is clicked. And the way we do this is we do this in this while loop with this get event, which shuts down the thread until we get an event. So if we take our display function and put it in the event loop, it will only display every time we get an event. So what exactly is an event? So let's print out a message to the debug window every time we get an event so we can see when we get events. So as I move the mouse around and click the mouse, you can see that events occur. But when I'm not doing anything, the program is completely shut down. So this a while loop only occurs and is only active while we're getting events. And otherwise, it's completely shut down. So let's get back to the idea of putting the circle out every time we click the mouse at the location where the mouse was clicked. So what we can do is we can use the mouse clicked function, which will return true if we've clicked the mouse. And then we can move the display after the mouse click. Let's change the name of Windows Center to Circle Location since it's now changeable. And so with the mouse click, we don't need the curly braces. 
what we can do is we can just say the circle location is now where we click the mouse, which is get mouse click position. So when we run it, now every time we click the mouse, we print a new circle at the location of the mouse click. So now let's change the circle location every time we just move the mouse. Like mouse clicked, we have a function called mouse moved, which will return true if the mouse was moved. And so we can change the circle location using get mouse pause. Get mouse click pause is where it was clicked. Get mouse pause is where it is now. So we can use either. So when we run it and we move the mouse, now we're printing a circle every time we even move the mouse. So let's add something else. Let's say I want to print a circle when I move the mouse only when the mouse button was down. So I can use the mouse button down function. And when I run it, you can see it only prints the circle when I have the mouse button down. This is also known as a mouse drag event. And so I can call a function called mouse drag event, which returns true if the mouse is moved and it was down. And so when I run it, I get exactly the same thing with the one function instead of the two. So I'm going to add one more function called CLS or clear screen. And it will clear the window every time I draw a circle. So when I run it and I move the mouse, it looks like I'm just drawing one circle instead of drawing multiple circles, which is a really nice effect. We don't really need that debug statement anymore, so let's get rid of that. And so now we just have kind of a nice basic Windows program that we can play with and add on to. So let's go ahead and add some things to it to make it more interesting. Thanks for watching the video. And keep in mind that Sagebox is a free library tool, and there are a lot of plans to expand it in the next year. So please consider donating to the project in the link in the description, and I will see you in the next video.